Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk here. We're now at lesson 10 of object role modeling. I've never been this excited in my life. And basically in lesson 10, what's going to happen is we're actually going to develop our um, relational database tables using our conceptual uh, schema diagram. And this process is basically called normalization. And uh, the reason why it's called normalization is because we want to develop a database in the optimal normal form, which makes the database have the characteristics that we were talking about that minimizes redundant information and um, update anomalies and things like that. So in order to come up with the tables, what we're going to do is we're going to draw some circles or loops around the relationships that's going to represent each table. So here are the steps. Okay, step one. Draw loops around groups of many-to-one or one-to-one -one relationships linked to key entities. So we're now looking for many-to-one, which are basically relationships where there is a line above either one of the rows or a line above both, uh, sorry, ab above both rows separately. So we don't want to look at any of the relationships with uh, a slower line across both rows. Okay, so we're crossing this one out at the moment. Okay, we're crossing those out at the moment. We're looking at circling the other things. Now, when we circle the relationships, we want to uh, think about which entity is the key entity. Right, the key entity meaning that the one uh, the entity that has the line above the row to, uh, to indicate that it's unique. Okay, so um, if we have a look at these two relationships, they both have student as the key entity because the line, the uniqueness constraint is on the student side. So we circle, we put a circle across. Uh, we put both of these relationships inside the loop. Okay, and then we can also see that um, there is a one-to-one -one relationship here. So we circle that. Right, what is the key? We can either use the home phone as the key or you can use the home address as the key. It doesn't matter. Um, so a key means that um, it's unique. So uh, home and parent, uh, which one is the key? Well, the parent ID is the unique one, so we're going to let that be the key. And um, so we got, uh, this is also many to one, uh, many, many to many, many to many, many to many. So we don't touch that. So these are the only ones we can circle right now. So in each of these tables, we have a key, right? In this first loop, student entity is the key, all right? Student ID is going to be the key. In this loop here, the parent ID is going to be the key because that's the line um, above uh, the role that the parent is playing. And with this loop here, either can be the key, so it doesn't matter. So what do we have? We got uh, many to one, one to one, all done. Okay, next, step two. Draw loops around many to many relationships and their nested relationships. So if you have a look, we got a many to many relationship here, so we can circle that, because that's part of step two. We have many to many relationship here, so we can circle that. Now we have a many-to-many -many relationship and the relationship that's nested off that, so we circle both of these within one table. And once every single relationship is circled, we finish the normalization process, 
uh, sorry, we finished step two, so now step three is going to be form table names and fields and underline key uh, key entities, I guess. And underlying keys, I'm just going to say that. So what what tables do we have? I'm just going to number it. I'm just going to say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, so I don't forget. So let's do um, table one. We don't have much space. It's table one. I'm going to name the table student. Right, I'm going to name a student and what are the fields? We have the student ID. Student ID. And I have the, uh, sorry, just let me scroll back. We got the birthday, we got the date, and we got the home address. Date, birth date. We got the home address. So student ID is the uh, is the key. Okay, now what's number two? Number two is the home address and the phone number. So two home phone. Let's call the table name that. And we got the home address. And we got the phone number. And either of these fields can be the key, so I'm just going to let the phone number be the key. Table number three, we got the parents ID and parents home address. So parent home. Okay, so we got the parent ID and the home address. And the key is obviously the parents ID. And what do I have for number four? Number four, I have student and parents. Students and parents. And we have a um, many to many relationship. So we got. The combination of both student ID and the parent ID are both keys. And then we have uh, table number five, studies. And then we got the student ID. What else do we have? We got the student ID, we got the subject, and we have the room. Right? And because student ID and subject, the uh, the two of them combined together is unique. So I put an underline through both of these to say that they can both together com combine together act as the key. And then number six is the um, teaching. Teaching. So we got the teacher ID and the subject, and then again both of them combined together can form the key because um, because uh, a, a teacher could teach multiple subjects, a subject could have multiple teachers, and so on. Okay, so this would be my database. Each of these represents a table. And then the tables are obviously linked together when you have the same fields. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.